From sexual harassment to discrimination, teenage pregnancies, child marriages, female genital mutilation, and a whole lot of other issues that are affecting our girl child, the question still remains, what are we doing about it? Hence our girls are being suppressed, they are being oppressed, and their rights are being violated. Welcome to the maiden episode of Girl Talk, a show that educates, analyzes, and advocates for girl-related issues. And I am your host, Isetwe Mboku. On today's maiden episode, we will be talking about sexual abuse. And the very big question is, is dress code the cause? We have seen instances where girls are being abused and harassed. And the excuse that most, most men take is that it's because of the way they are dressed. So today on the panel, I have with me Sisi Sawane, who is an activist and a journalist. And I also have with me Christopher Tejan Smith. He is also an activist and a youth advocate. They're going to tell us what they think about the topic. Sissy, do you think dress code is the cause of sexual harassment, mostly for girls? Um, thank you very much, Aisatu. I think this is a very important question and a very important panel. Um, having such a discussion if dress code is um, a main cause when it comes to um, sexual abuse. Um, as a girls' rights activist and also women's rights activist, I believe that a dress code should not be a contributing factor to sexual harassment because there is nothing like a dress code of a particular child um, a particular girl child should be uh, a, um, a contributing factor for a particular person to be um, sexually abused or harassed. So basically, in my point of view and from experience wise, I believe that dress code should not be a contributing factor because the dress code of a particular person depends on that particular person's individual uh, personality mm -hmm. and not being uh, the way the person is, is being dressed. So basically, I would say that the, the dress code of a particular child should not be a means or contributing factor to sexual harassment and we have seen a lot of countries we have different back culture we have different traditions and then we have different religion so it depends on what the particular individual wants to dress and how yeah. to dress and not should not be a contributing factor to sexual harassment so Tijan Smith you're a guy and your fellow men take the excuse that it's because of the way girls are dressed maybe they are too exposed or they look so sexual so that is an excuse for them to jump on them so what do you think about this? Uh, thank you very much Isato. I think this is really a great platform to come and talk about burning issues like this because if you look at our society today when you talk about women you talk about sexual assault you talk about rape now I don't think anything justifies why women need to be abused or raped not what they wear not the person's uh, uh, psychology or physical appearance. But there's a dreaded line that we have to cross, that we always have to put into consideration. That is modesty. Yeah. Modesty is important in a way, it doesn't affect the individual that is opposite you and it doesn't affect you um, personally. When you look at today's society, like she said, we have different cultures, we have different um, 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 religions as well. And people have their choice to, to take whatever they want. Now, if, if you dress in a certain type of way, you might not actually notice that because it's your right to, to, to put on what you want, but you might not actually know the harm it's, 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 it's causing to others. So I feel there, there's a thin line between it. It, it's, it shouldn't constitute or justify men to rape women or sexually assault them, but there should also be a consideration for modesty with women. Women need to know that they need to be modest with whatever they have to wear. She made a very important point regarding children who are sexually assaulted, you understand? You can't really tell what they're wearing or whether it's what they're wearing that attracted, you know, these people that would actually um, um, sexually assault them. I, I feel it has to do more of the state of the mind and, you know, how we are raised as men as well, which we will get into um, 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 as we get on with the show. Thank you very much, Tijan. And we're just going to talk about children who do not actually dress sexually, yep. yet they are being assaulted. And the main issue is that we have parents that do not listen to the kids. Whenever they come to them to explain that maybe my Quranic teacher, for example, or my teacher in school is assaulting me, they do not give a listening ear because they believe that they're just making up stories. Sissy, as a girl, what do you think about this too? <laughs> uh, thank you, Aysan. I think in whatever we're doing, we should first consider the best interest of a child. Mm -hmm. And the best interest of a child should always be a priority to a parent. And you just made mention whether parents should be um, informed or they should be considered the way their uh, culture is being dressed. Just to tell you that whatever we are doing, the best interest of a child should be to always be a priority. Mm -hmm. And then we have seen a lot of grown-up men raping little girls. Yeah. Let's say a 40-year-old man recently 
there was a rape case, a 40-year-old man raped a 14-year-old girl. Are we having pedophiles in the country? Mm -hmm. Because these are grown men, so I wouldn't say the dress code of a particular child should be a contributing factor to a girl being sexually harassed. Because a baby of, let's say, two or three years old, that cannot be there because of the dress code. Because mm -hmm. we, we, we actually know that how the baby is being dressed is not a, as a contributing factor to uh, for her to be raped. So I believe that uh, if not if not we, if not uh, being having a pedophile in the country or whatsoever it is, but I believe that the best interest of a child should always be a priority to a parent. And then the parent also should know that they have a responsibility, and that is to take care of their girl child, mm -hmm. whether it's a girl or a boy. They have a responsibility. It's clearly stated in the Children's Amendment Act 2016 that they have a responsibility to take care of their children. So basically, I think a parent has, has a right to take care of his or her child and to make sure that they are being grown up in a very decent family. Modesty, as he rightly mentioned, should always be a, a, a priority and the best of the child. So I believe that in whatever we are doing, we have two connotations to the story. Mm -hmm. It's either the parent or the child, but the modesty and the way we dress should always be a priority. And, and, and wait, that, that would definitely bring me back to how we are raised in society, yeah. you understand? Mm -hmm. Now, normally, we don't have parent-to-child dialogue in the Gambia. We don't have, you know, that platform where parents and children can sit down. Culture of silence. Yes, and talk about sexual education. Yeah. We, we see it as a big thing. So, it's always a problem for parents to sit and talk to their children, you understand? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, 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 the most profound thing you hear, you hear them say is, don't let boys touch your breast. Thank don't you. let boys do, do that to you. Sometimes you have sexual assault cases even in homes where yeah. uncles are raping their niece, you understand? And, and when, when these children go out to talk about these things, we the parents shut them up, you mm -hmm. understand? Because mm -hmm. we don't want to hear it. We're like, this, this cannot happen, your uncle cannot rape you, when indeed the uncle raped her. Yeah. So we have had similar cases like this in the Gambia, and I feel it comes down to how we raise our children as well, which is the right. The interest of your child should always come before anything. You understand? Yeah. It, it started with early marriage, with, with, with parents giving out their children you know, at an early stage. But with the right way that we are raised, we will definitely get there. But with sexual assault cases, no, it doesn't justify what you wear. What you wear doesn't justify why you need to be assaulted. Sure. And Tijan, just to add up to that, what about if this sexual harassment Man, happens to be a family member okay. what do you think should be done to this person i think the the, the right it's not what, what what we think should be done the right thing to do is to take the case to the authorities mm -hmm. because psychologically mentally you have affected the child's being yeah. you know is, is, is she going to grow is she going to be okay is society going to accept her you know all these mirage things will definitely affect her in a long run so these cases these cases need to be reported we need to um, 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 jail the perpetrator so we can set examples so we can't have just pedophiles running around the country doing anything they want to such um, um, young innocent girls yeah. we need to start acting and it starts with us whether we're youth, whether we're parents, we, I'm talking from um, um, a parent's perspective because I have a daughter, <laughs> sure, you yeah. understand? So I wouldn't really want certain things to happen to my child because mm -hmm. I have to stand firm. Yeah. I have to always remind my child about sexual education, about the importance of sex, what it does, you understand? So they are aware of these things. So when it happens, they are not surprised. Sure. Yeah. And I guess the issue of awareness creation, uh, we, had a, we had a lot of cases happening in different communities but the culture of silence and not be able to report cases or the right channel to report these cases. And we have a lot of channels, a lot of different places that we can always channel these problems, problems so that they too, can yeah. look into it. We have focal points, we have focal, focal persons in different police stations. So if but are these channels very effective? They are very, very effective. effective. Very effective. Very effective. It's, just, it's just lack of awareness. People are not aware that we have focal persons in these different institutions or stations. So the best way that we can do is to have in this panel discussions, having sensitization, radio programs. It all contributes on how best we can create that awareness in our different communities. You go to hard to reach communities, they don't even know that these things exist. Mm -hmm. They believe in having a family dialogue, dialogue. that's it. Mm -hmm. So I believe that let's, have the, let's break the culture of silence, let's report these cases, let's create more awareness and we'll be able to free our girl child from such acts because the public creators will not be taken to court. Yeah. It's only a few cases. Let's say in 2018, we had a lot of rape cases because people are not coming out to report. But in 2017, 2016, we, we, it's, it's very difficult for you to have such reports from a parent or from someone in society. So the best way we can do this is to have a lot of awareness creation, make sure that these perpetrators are taken to justice and then justice must prevail. Mm -hmm. And then we should know that there's a law that we have in place that is there to protect the gacha. So basically, I think with the awareness creation and also having this focal point, focal persons, we'll be able to combat them. Let's take this to the next level. Let's talk about women who are sexually assaulted in the office place. 
let's talk about that's women office work at that's all. office work okay. at all you know because women have rights as well we need yeah. to protect them we have had we have seen cases where women would be sexual sexually assaulted mm -hmm. and then thrown out of their job seriously and then it, they, they will be thrown out there are no human resource departments to look into to these look issues. into cases like this yeah. so i feel sexual assault has has gotten to a higher peak that we really need to put certain things into consideration i talked about modesty now if it, it's not like an alignment because I know with your five common sense as a human being, yeah. you wouldn't want to um, 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 put grievous bodily harm on someone and, and cause them hate or cause them damage. damage the yeah. most important thing to do is identify the factors. Okay, how do I dress and what does it do? Mm -hmm. How does it affect other people? We must also know that it is our right to put on whatever we want. But where our right stops is where somebody, somebody else's right begins. Starts, yeah. So there are certain things we need to always put into consideration because yeah. it's not about, okay, fine, I would dress at any how that I want and go to any place that I want without, you know, repercussions or without anybody having to assault me. Yes, it is true that nothing you wear can justify why, why you are assaulted, but there's you a still need to be life. modest yes. and look modest better. about it. So we're just going to continue with this. We're going to listen to the public and know what they have to say about the topic. And we'll be right back.
Welcome back. It looks like the public has different things to say <laughs> and <laughs> everybody has their own ideas and their own points about what they think, if sexual harassment, um, dress code is a cause or not. So we're just going to go back into our discussion. I want you to tell me, Tijan, what's the importance of human resource management department in an office? Because most of the offices we see in the Gambia do not have this department. And girls who work in those offices like face sexual harassment, but they don't have places to go. They either have to leave the job or continue the job, yet they are still being harassed. I, I think the problem is not with the human, the lack of human resource offices we have. You know, I, I think it's with the poverty line that most people are going through. Now, when you look at certain situations, everybody is hungry to have a have a working status. Mm -hmm. You understand? Everybody wants a, a, a job. Yeah. And there are cases where you meet certain men and, and they take advantage of you. You understand? They want to sexually assault you and tell you, you know what, before I actually give you this job, this is what is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And the lack of awareness. People don't know what the Human Resource Office can do for them. Oh, yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. What type of complaint do I have? Do I go to the Human Resource Office and lodge my complaint? What type of investigation is going to be conducted to make sure that my case or I have, you know, I'm, I'm something to back with my case. So this is always the problem. But the Human Resource Office is there for the interest of the staff. It's there for the interest of the people working for the certain, um, 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 that type of institution. Now, the problem here is you have, a, you have a human resource manager and normally the owner of the company or the institution knows this human resource manager. Mm -hmm. So when there's a problem, it doesn't go up. Because these people are there in the working high title class and they can do whatever they want. Yeah. And these cases will not um, um, go them, further. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in the Gambia, we have ego. Mm. There's a lot of ego. A whole lot we of can't it. talk about <laughs> things we go through, especially in the offices. If, if your boss is supposed to sexually assault you today, you wouldn't want to tell your friends because you would be so embarrassed about it. Yeah. So this is, again, a, another huge problem that a lot of people are going through. A lot of people are going through so many things in this country, but they can't actually come out and talk about it. So the Human Resource Office is vital, is important, is there for the staff, and they need to utilize it. And so we need to have a lot of human resource departments in offices in the Gambia. It's very, very vital and it's important, like Tijan said. So, Sissy, what about girls that have been sexually harassed? Like, what advice do you have for them? Um, I could say rape is, the, is one of the most, you know, traumatic, you know, uh, way a person can go through, a, a girl child, especially less than 18 or so. Yeah. So we have a lot of institutions, we have a lot of individuals advocating for the rights of women and children, and we have the Child Protection Alliance, we have the Female Association of the Gambia, that's flat, and we have the Network Against Gender-Based Violence, that's uh, NGBV. So I think it's more of um, awareness creation, let's get to these people, talk to these people, share our stories. Mm -hmm. Because through these human interest stories, through talking to a person, narrating your story, you can actually know the channel you're going through. Mm -hmm. But then having your own story, without sharing your story, then there's no way you can improve yourself. So the, the, the way we can only, the way we can do, or the way we can pass through all these things, is by narrating our stories, yeah. sharing our stories. And maybe someone out there will know the right channel you, you should go through, and we have to report these cases. Because we have all these institutions, it's not, it's not an, an institution that is basically there for themselves, but for the general public. Yeah. We have CPA, where we have a lot of institutions that are part of. We have FLAT, that are, that are part of you know, institutions that are able to give some legal advices. We have NGBV, trying to advocate for rights of women and children. So basically, if you, if you, if you are a perpetrator or some are, are being victimized under this, um, all these rape cases, whether it's FGM, whether it's rape or any other thing, just you go just to these people, them, yeah. narrate your story or share your story with them and then you'll be able to be, they'll be able to help you and see how best you can not go through all those trauma and traumatic moments. So basically, if they pass through all the institutions, they'll be able to know what exactly they can do. And the issue of HR, I think in any organized institution there is HR manager. Yeah. It just depends on how you know they utilize the exactly, presence and then of how the HR. they can do to make sure that all complaints are at the top level, yes. at the management level. Yes. Yes. But when you have a HR manager who doesn't even know what his or her role is in a particular institution, you can have, have your complaint to the next level. Exactly. Yeah. So basically they should be trained, they mm -hmm. should know what their roles are because they have been paid for and then they should be able to know what exactly they can do. So in any organized institution we have an HR 
But they don't know what they can what do they or can, what they yeah. can do. And just to add, on, managers. Just to add on that, I, I think if, if you have a weak HR in your institution or in your workplace, we have the labor department here. Mm -hmm. Visit the labor department. Give them your complaint. Some women are sacked from work without any genuine reason. You understand? Just yeah. because they are, their boss wants to sleep. And they can even sue because of maybe money sue. or something. Exactly. So yeah. you need to know about these, these doors and you go to them and, 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 and be free. And one more thing. These people coming out to share their stories. Mm -hmm. Therapy is very good. Obviously. Because you can't go through assault, you can't go through rape without having psychological issues or, or trauma like she said. Yes, you understand? Yes. So you need therapy. And this therapy has to be given by these people. And it's the only way that we can help these young girls, you know, to sustain whatever damages that they have that they have actually gone through. Or even the ombudsman where we have uh, they are basically for public institutions. If not the labor union or the labor labor, labor department, department, you can go to the ombudsman. But sure. how many of us know that we are, we should go to the ombudsman? We thought that it's just there for them to just you know, decorate that particular place. But I think it's there for public institution for civil servants. Mm -hmm. If you have issues, go to the ombudsman, not far from you. You know, exactly. just go and lodge your complaint. Sure, you've heard from them all and we have so many departments that you can meet whenever you have troubles like this, especially as a girl. You, you get to face so many issues and you just don't know where to run to, you don't know who to ask for help. So you have listened from Sissy and you've heard from Tijan. It has been a great platform. Thank you very much for joining me, Sissy and Tijan. Thank you very much for watching the maiden episode of Girls Talk and I've been your host, Isa Tuembokum.